bacon? Yeah. Where'd you guys go? No, I don't eat bacon. I don't eat meat. Oh, uh, I, do I don't even eat pizza. Oh. <laughs> uh, it's a it's a commercial for Papa John's. Oh, okay. You were just. I was just watching TV. it on the TV, and I was just completely were... dumbfounded by it. I was like, okay, pizza, relatively fatty, deep dish pizza, four times as fatty, deep dish pizza surrounded by bacon. That's insane. Like, what? Where are we going with our food choices? You know. So. Yeah, and I love America. There's some amazing food here, and there's got, they've got some great cuisine. Uh, and, you know, a naughty treat every so often is fine, but, I mean, these bacon deep dish pizzas were like this. I mean, if one person eats that, I dread to think what is going on with your internal organs, but that is, that's a recipe for disaster. Literally a recipe for disaster. Yeah. Great. Um, so, I know I've read that you were attached to pet. Um, since about 2007? Mm, maybe even earlier, but yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, so what made you want to, what, what about the story made you want to stick with it until all this time until Um, I'm just kind of stubborn like that, you know. It was in between filming seasons one and two of Lost, I was supposed to do it. So I'm not sure when the timeline was for that. It was quite a long time ago. Um, it was at that point a project at MGM and I just loved it. I just, you know, it was it was sent to me, and I read it, and I thought the character was was very well realized, and uh, went on a fantastic journey. Um, and I thought the script was was brilliant. And I met with uh, Jeremy Slater in LA, and he had said that he had written the, the part for me, um, which at first I didn't believe him. You know, I was like, ah, that can't be true. You're just saying that to be nice. But then years later, he was like, no, man, like I was watching you and I wrote this character around what, who I thought. Yeah, like Lost and a few other interviews that I'd done like post Lord of the Rings, you know. So he based it on me, <coughs> which was amazing. And then it, it ran around MGM for a long time. It was me and Melissa George for a while. And then it was me and Shannon Sussman for a while. And then it was me and someone else I can't remember. And then it just got wrapped up in kind of a development issue and I just said to my agent just keep an eye on it because if it comes back around again I want to do it and then I was finishing off a video game last year my agent called me and said pet came back but it was like 10 years later you know and, they, and Seth was supposed to be like in his early 20s and I said well I don't want to like him in my early 20s anymore I might have like him in my early 30s maybe but not early 20s mm -hmm. but I said let me meet Carlos and I'll just pitch him the why why couldn't you be 10 years older there's no reason why he couldn't be and uh and then we made it. Great. Um, mm -hmm. So I know he's a bit of a darker character. Does that attract you to, to roles? Um, do you like playing those characters more so than kind of the good guys? I, I don't really differentiate. I mean, I just like characters, you know. I just like good characters. It doesn't, it doesn't really bother me whether they have good intentions or bad, good, or bad intentions. It's just how well written are those characters. I think over the years, I've jumped backwards and forwards purposefully. So if I've played someone genuinely good, usually the next person that I play is genuinely bad and then I, I jump backwards and forwards because I think it's important to show an audience that you're not the last thing that you did because pigeonholing is, is massive, you know. Um, and with Seth, obviously he has, yeah, he has some dark elements to his, to his character. As an actor, whether you, whether you approve of a character's behaviour or not, you have to find things about them that you can relate to or that you can understand. I mean, if you're playing a murderer, it's difficult for you to relate to someone murdering someone, but you have to understand their motivations, their intention, their, their, their mind, you know. So with Seth, he's very lonely, he's very isolated, he's very immature, he's probably, probably doesn't have any friends, probably never had a girlfriend, doesn't have a relationship with his parents. So I kind of closed myself off and didn't really interact with anyone for a little bit, just just to try and understand that a little bit more, you know? And then, and then you have to find things that, you, that the audience will empathize with as well, because as the lead character, if the audience don't like him, then they're very quick to just say, I don't like the movie because I don't like the main guy. So you have to make him, I, I try to make him sympathetic, not necessarily likable, because there's nothing about him that's likable, but like, they kind of feel for me. They're like, ah, oh, he's lonely or oh, he's sad, you know. Okay. Um, and I know you've worked on, obviously, all of the rings and lost some big productions. How uh, we were just speaking with Carlos um, that you guys uh, filmed in four weeks. Mm -hmm. So how, how does that 
I like a small budget just fine. I don't really mind one way or the other, you know. Um, there's no real difference for me. I was just saying someone on the phone, like, it never feels different. A, a, a day on set of Lord of the Rings, which is arguably be one of the biggest movies ever shot, was no different than a day on set of Pet. I have a responsibility as an actor to know my lines, to hit my marks, to, to try and explore different ways of, of doing things in the scene. But it doesn't feel different if I'm dressed as a as a hobbit next to a green screen or if I'm dressed as set in a in a set. I mean, I never really feel the money or see the money. It's that's not my it's not where my focus is in the daytime. My focus is am I telling the correct story for the character, you know? So there's great things about small budget movies. You might get to know the crew a little bit better. There might be more of an intimate kind of small close knit group feeling going on. Um, but there's great things about making big films too, you know, I mean, you, you, you never really want for anything and also you know that things like special effects are going to get taken care of in, in a great way, you know, so you can always find good things. Okay, um, so I know you've done more other things, you've done Lost, which is one of my favorite shows. Um, cool. And also, uh, Dawn's Wild Things, which mm. I think is really cool. Um, how did you kind of come to that and how did you kind of get involved in that? Because I think that's really interesting. Yeah. And also, I saw one where I think you were making there before. You're taking shots or something, and then it just like uh, it exits out, and like the next day you're exploring somewhere. Yeah, I think that was Brazil, Brazil maybe. Because yeah. um, we've not done Mexico yet. Yeah. But um, I, go. I love animals. I, I've always kept animals as a kid, uh, usually slightly stranger animals because I couldn't have dogs and cats because my brother and I were allergic to fur when we were kids. So we had lizards and snakes and spiders and scorpions when we were younger. Um, my dad was a biologist, became a biology teacher. My dad, my brother, uh, studied biology at university, became a biology teacher. I did a certain amount of studying of biology um, and then obviously became an actor. But um, I just love animals. Whenever I wasn't working, I was traveling to see animals. You know, when I was 18, I went to Borneo to try and find orangutans, which I just went to do in Sumatra uh, like three weeks ago. and. Uh, went to Thailand swim with whale sharks and I kept telling my agent about it when I would come back and eventually he was like you know this is a show like if you have a camera crew with you this is a TV show you can turn your holidays into a TV show and you can do something bigger and you can actually make a statement and and try and raise awareness about these creatures so uh, wild things came about because I think there's a lot of animals that get pushed by the wayside that don't have this charismatic kind of totem about them and I love polar bears and orangutans and gorillas and tigers and lions and I think all those animals deserve to be saved and I think they're sentinel creatures and you know I uh, I adore them but we we do know their story you know and I, and hopefully knowing that story will mean that they'll be saved uh, by us uh, if we if we sort our shit out in time but there are a lot of animals that people just pushed by the wayside because bats are disgusting or rats are not cool or spiders bite or wasps sting but just because a creature is disgusting by human terms or dangerous it doesn't make it any less significant or any less important they still have feelings they still have stories to tell they were still born they're still going to die they're still looking for a mate and my whole kick with animals is if you claim to be an animal lover if you love dogs and cats and kittens and guinea pigs and rabbits and horses, you also have to love bats and scorpions and slugs and spiders and snakes. It's not an exclusive club where you get to pick. We are animals, we're part of this animal group. So you're supposed to love all of them and that's the message of the show that I'm trying to put out there. Um, so what other projects do you have coming um, up? We're just finishing Wild Things, so I just got back from, from Bali. Uh, three. Craziest animal, when we just did the King Cobra in Bali, which was pretty nuts, uh, I got chased by an African elephant in Kenya, which was, which was kind of touch and go for a little bit there. Um, best location, I mean, Madagascar was pretty amazing. Mozambique was pretty amazing. I love Peru, I'm going to Peru in a week. Um, uh, I don't know, I get spoiled. There's a lot of really amazing places, you know. So we're finishing off 
we'll finish off Wild Things, uh, and then hopefully we'll we'll sell this movie, and then I'm going to go to Peru, and then I broke my foot at the end of last year in some stupid motorcycle thing. So I think I have to have surgery on my foot, which will take me into kind of May June, and then I'll see I'll see what's what's out there. You know, um, not necessarily rushing into anything. Um, I'm a little picky, which I think you should be, but I don't want to be too picky that you don't work, but I also don't want to kind of say yes to everything. So I'm just reading stuff. I'm waiting for the next thing that I read, which is as good as The Lost Pilot, or is as good as Pet, or is as good as X-Men. You know, I do projects based on reading a script and going, ooh, that's going to be good. So we'll see. Okay. Um, so are you looking forward to anything um, at Top yeah, I want to see Phantasm because, you know, J.J. did a remastering of that. It's going to be exciting. There's a Jake Gyllenhaal film that I want to check out. Uh, I can't remember the name of it either. Yeah, Demolition. work. Yeah. I want to see that. Um, there's a film about abuse with a girl that I really like, Michelle Williams, I think, that I want to check out. Um, there's a few documentaries. There's a, doc there's a documentary about Asperger's syndrome that I want to watch. Um, I love documentaries, so if I have time, I'll go see as many documentaries as I can. Uh, Elijah Wood is here with a film that he did with Nicolas Cage, so I'm going to go see that the day after. Yeah. Um, and I don't know, check out some bands. I think Ray LaMontagne's playing, so I'd love to see him. He's one of my favorites. Um, you know, before I stopped eating meat, obviously there was some great, there's some great barbecue here. But I don't eat meat, I've not eaten meat for a couple of years now. And uh, some cool sushi joints are here too. Um, I don't know, Elijah's gonna take me out one night. Uh, and we'll, we'll see. I'm gonna, stay, I'm gonna stay at Elijah's on the 14th. So I stay at a hotel for the first few nights. And then Elijah has a place here, which I've never seen. So he was like, dude, come stay with me and we'll play video games and we'll, eat burgers and I was like well I'll play video games but I can't eat burgers um, but yeah man it's always fun hanging out with your friends and especially Elijah knows Austin pretty well now so I just said you pick like whatever you want to do we'll do it you know yeah